What up, what up, what up, everybody? This is Dario Hunt from Live Life Fearless. Welcome back to another episode of our Fearless Show podcast. Today's date is May 29, 2019. With me, as always, is my co-host, Mr. Drew Reese Walker. Say what up to everybody. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Fearless Show. Me and Dario back to chop it up with some topics and, of course, a spoiler cast. <laughs> yeah, so, obviously... The main topic for the last few weeks, or really the last month, has been Game of Thrones and, you know, pretty swamped the last couple of weeks, so couldn't really get too much into it, but, you know, we're going to... G-O-T. Be... But now that it's all said and done, we definitely want to go, you know, full-on spoiler cast about the entirety of uh, Game of Thrones as a series, and specifically this last season, which has been incredibly, let's say, divisive between uh the public interesting yeah and like um, i said on a few podcasts i was gonna catch up and i caught up all the way <laughs> so yeah. I, I saw it i saw the the finale when the finale came out on that sunday i was there with the thronies <laughs> so we're gonna get into that uh we have some news items before that and of course before we get into all that we're gonna do a little housekeeping so if you are liking these podcasts um you know i see you we see your comments. We see, you know, some good responses. So if you're liking these podcasts and wherever you guys, you know, catch us, either that's on YouTube or SoundCloud or Google Play or iTunes, wherever this one goes up, you know, be sure to like and subscribe and uh, share. It helps us out greatly. And if you like any of the gear that we rock in these videos, like this hat I'm wearing here, the hat that Doris is wearing, this shirt I'm wearing, or Doris's shirt that he's wearing, you can also grab some from the store for yourselves. Yeah. But let's get right to it. So for news items, um, Cannes Film Festival, I think, just ended, I think, five days ago. It's always mm-hmm. kind of a big uh, big moment, big event for film, particularly indie film. And there's always like a lot of buzz about stuff that you should be on the lookout for um, down Definitely. the line. And honestly, this year there wasn't like a ton of major controversial stuff or like major things that people were all talking about mm-hmm. but I did notice a couple things well one that I knew beforehand but that I'm kind of jealous that they got to see first was Quentin Tarantino's ninth film Once Upon a Time in Hollywood mm-hmm. I don't know if you've seen the trailer for that one I have not seen the trailer for that but I knew it was coming out that's crazy so ooh I'm excited I was just talking to somebody about Hateful Eight and how amazing that was. So, so yeah, he just released the like real in depth kind of trailer for it last week. Yeah, last mm-hmm. week or the week before, I can't really remember, but it was in uh, one of our last trailer roundups that you can find on the site. And you know, it looks like a Quentin Tarantino film. A ton of character, a ton of character development. Yeah. Uh, a setting that he personally loves, you know, kind of like 70s, I think 70s, maybe late 60s, I don't remember, mm-hmm. uh, Hollywood and kind of surrounding, loosely surrounding the events of the whole uh, Manson uh, murder oh, and stuff like yeah. that with Sharon Tate. And then it's just dealing with That's like right. film kind of transitioning from like the golden <clears throat> era and stuff like that. And, like, so it's kind of like a love letter to Hollywood. And it's been mm. getting a ton of rave reviews, and it's Tarantino. He's my favorite director, so I'm going to see whatever he puts out. But it's got yeah. Brad Pitt and uh, Leonardo DiCaprio and Al Pacino, I believe, and Robert De Niro, even. Mm. I don't know. The cast is crazy, so I, I definitely can't wait to see <laughs> Right. Oh, that sounds lit. I'm definitely there for, for that. So, But yeah. And then there was another movie called The Dead Don't Die. Um, it's like a zombie, oh. dark comedy from Jim Jarmusch. We also wrote about it on our site uh, maybe a month ago. And the cast, just like that one, is pretty stacked and heavy. Like Bill Murray, uh, yeah. Adam Driver, Tilda Swinton, Steve Buscemi, uh, Selena Gomez, Tom Waits. Like, it's, it's pretty oh, wow. heavy cast about, you know small town America and a zombie outbreak happens and Bill Murray's <laughs> the sheriff. So 
<laughs> what? Could be could be pretty funny. Um Oh yeah. They released the trailer. Remember Bill Murray in Zombie Land? It reminds me exactly Bill Murray. <laughs> Well, obviously, Bill Murray Zombies, I'm immediately going to think Zombieland, which is one of the most <laughs> underrated movies out there and a movie that I fucking absolutely love. Like, BFM, Bill that, fucking that Murray. <laughs> and his this little 10 minute scene. Maybe Where he was dying. Was just fucking perfect. So, I'm really excited to see Bill Murray once again back in Zombieland. Yeah, he stole that movie. It's crazy. No, <laughs> those were all kind of, let's say, mainstream, more mainstream type of films that got kind of acknowledgement at cons. There was one film, there was one controversial showing. Um, and more for its promo than anything else. It's some like indie film we also wrote about on our website. So mm. you guys can go check that out in our new section to get more in-depth details about it. But it's called When Women Rule the World. And it's kind of like a spoof or parody huh. with the lead kind of actress. She looks like uh, Melania Trump. And it's <laughs> like pretty political, but then not. Like it's just, and it kind of stole Kathy Griffin's a little. Remember when mm. Kathy Griffin had... A decapitated uh, head of Donald Trump for like her promotion of one of her like stand ups or something. Oh, huh. And she got like interesting, basically blacklisted and I don't know about that. Whole ton, ton of shit. There's a ton of negative backlash she got from that. Well, she did that <laughs> maybe 2016, I bet. and this director Sheldon Silverstein is kind of doing the same thing for the promo. He has like it's like this chick that clearly is supposed to be Melania Trump in one hand's like some alien looking thing head and then the other hand it's like <laughs> Donald Trump wearing a make America Great Again hat. Like it's some satir some satirical, like politically charged indie film. And it looks terrible if you if you've seen the trailer. Huh. All right. Interesting. <laughs> dystopian post-apocalyptic spoof like it's fucking insane but i suggest you guys go to the official site and kind of get more info about that mm. <laughs> bless it for cons um cons cans i don't even know how you specifically say it but i always hear keep cons, saying it like that cans cons yeah <laughs> we recently had another um News article about, uh, I don't know if you've seen like those deep fake videos where with the help of like video editing and AI technology that you can now basically fake anybody saying almost anything and mm. it looks damn near realistic. Like they put the head of, yeah. I think Obama on like Poot, on Putin and Oh, like some Putin speech was coming out and like he was mouthing it perfectly and stuff like that. I don't know if you've seen that. <laughs> and I think also Oh, um, I have seen something Jordan Peele did no, like a, a PSA about it where he was like <laughs> again, Obama saying something, but then like at the end of the video he revealed himself to be like it this was just Jordan Peele giving like the speech and he's talking about how you have to be careful about what you believe and whatever. Yeah. So deep fake is a thing now, deep fake AI technology where it's getting pretty <laughs> crazy because you can basically take anybody and make them say almost anything now. Um Yeah. So I think it's taken an even greater step forward now because Samsung, like they have like an AI kind of arm of their company that's been working on this deep fake type of technology and they just revealed huh. that they can deep fake a person from a single image and turn it into like oh, a video yeah, of them yeah. saying anything. And how they kind of presented it and showed this was they took the Mona Lisa painting. The Mona Lisa painting, yeah. I did see the, our article on this. And turned it into a full on like 
video clip of it basically coming to life and like talking and like emoting and like it was like like it was almost like a real person and this is from like a fucking yeah. painting yeah and they had like three different uh frames so like it was animated differently in three different ways and they're like it looks crazy yes and this wasn't done with like um you know months of video editing you know or Somebody going right. in by hand and doing the frames. So like none of this. This was taken from the image of Mona Lisa, and it fed through like their AI yeah. algorithm. And it, I think they overlay it over like an existing clip, and mm-hmm. basically mask what they're saying almost perfectly. Where yeah, like it, it matches was weird. Up. So because he was like turning and shit, I was like, what? <laughs> and then the algorithm just did it. Like, yeah. I'll Basically, you painting. The click of a button. Yeah. Yeah. It was wild. It's fucking crazy. So, like, <laughs> you guys can't picture what I'm saying. You should definitely go so to weird. the site. There's a 30 second kind of clip of them, like, actually demonstrating this in action. And it's, it's fucking mind blowing, actually. That this is how far we've come that you really have to be careful about. Like, it's awesome. But then at the same time, it's kind of like, fucked up and scary because you know how <laughs> easily people are kind of manipulated and with like the climate with, and politics and then like countries and shit that you can fake almost anything now so like it's it's pretty sane so I'm not really uh, a huge fan of like tell all books mm-hmm. but then at the same time, they do provide <laughs> some fucking crazy ass like behind the scenes info about things that you would like never really expect. Oh yeah, for sure. And some real spicy stories in those. <laughs> yeah, and Chris Catan. Um, I don't know if you know him, but if you saw a picture, for sure you know him. Um, Ex Saturday Night Live member from. The 90s, he did Night mm-hmm. at the Roxbury with Will Ferrell. Um, oh, yeah. He was you know, right. the smarter guy. Yeah, so he just did a kind of tell-all book about his life. And oh, it, wow. There's obviously a lot of crazy shit in there um, to be right. expected. But one of, the, one of the things that is kind of like making waves is this story about how he said he alleges Lorne Michaels, who was you know, the whole brains behind Saturday Night Live pressured mm-hmm. him to have sex with Amy Heckerling, who was supposed to direct Tonight at, Night at the Roxbury so that the movie would be made <laughs> because wow. she was thinking about, like, walking away from it. <laughs> wow. That's interesting. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. So the way he paints it is... She was basically making advancements at him and like kind of coming on him, but he was not really feeling it and was like turning her down. And then apparently she went to Lauren saying that she's thinking about stepping away from the movie and a whole bunch of stuff behind the scenes where the distributor or the publisher, I think the distributor was only going to back it if she was directing. So basically I think what he says in what he says Lauren said to him was, Chris, I'm not saying you have to fuck her, but it wouldn't hurt. <laughs> <laughs> and he says he ultimately ended up having sex with her on the couch in her office. He said it he said it was consensual, but that he was very afraid of the power that she and Lauren had over his career. So Wow. Wow. Me too moment that's kind of been flipped. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> I could see that though. I mean, especially at the time when that movie was being made, and what that movie was, I could see that happening. Doesn't seem far fetched. She's like, "Yeah, well, she's not feeling it, man. You know, you're gonna have to make her want to come to work, bro." <laughs> 
I mean, like, yo, like, you know, Me Too is, it's definitely lost yeah. a lot of its steam, but it's still, uh, you know, uh, very much a thing and at the forefront of a lot of people's minds. So mm-hmm. I wonder if this is going to pick up any type of real publicity and steam because this is basically cast well, a couch, but the obviously the genders are reversed. Yeah. I mean, the whole thing with that is like, uh, I mean, it could become a thing, but the people involved would have to be interviewed. Like if he doesn't answer questions related to it, when they talk to him about his book, like in the public sphere mm-hmm. or like the women involved, if they're, you know, still around are like not answering questions and there's no, you know, thing around it. Then there's like nobody to punish. So like, there's no like steam because the internet loves to punish somebody specific. And if they can't like end somebody and to cancel them, then they probably won't like go crazy for it. They'll just save it as an example of like it happens to guys too. But this is definitely a more specific example that validates like the the happening on both sides, you know, that uh so like Terry Cruz isn't the only story out there. Like there's actually mm-hmm stories of of men in Hollywood being taken advantage of. Yeah, Terry's was a little different, but yeah. Yeah, this is different for sure. Uh, But in the vein of of male actors talking about uh, people in power in their profession, but being afraid of their power based on sexual... Yeah, I guess I'm just really interested to see where this one goes, if it goes anywhere, because... If I didn't describe the names or the genders to you and I just described the events, I think 99% of, 99.9% of people would assume that it was some actress getting pressured to fuck a director. Mm-hmm. And if that was the case, I think that this would be headlines in far more places than it is as it is now. Yeah. Definitely. That's very true. So, But at the same time, I don't know. It's like, yeah, people don't empathize with men, really, you know, anyway. So it's not like people wouldn't care as much, even though it's it's a big deal because he said it, but it's not like people don't care as much because he's a guy. Yes. So, yeah, I mean, that devil standard exists. In people's minds when they're making these opinions, so I don't, I don't I mean, think it's going to catch team. Came out. I don't think it's going to catch team. I, I don't think, think it is either. It's coming and, I think that's and gone. Kind of. I don't know how I feel about that. That it's not going to catch anything, but Mm-mm. I think that kind of fuels fire to adds fuels the fire for people who are saying like the whole double standard type, whatever, blah blah. But yeah. SNL has already, or some producers from SNL, not Lauren himself, has already come out and denied the allegations. Uh. Yeah, that's what you gotta do. But yeah, we'll see if this goes anywhere. I just thought it was. <laughs> they haven't been pressured to issue any official statements, really. They're just, hey, they'll throw your words to address it that we're aware. All right. And. If the internet makes them say something else, they'll say something else. But... I have a feeling it's going to die out pretty quickly. Yeah. But... I'm All sure right. his book sales are going up. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean... It's a great promo. It's a great promo for a book. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> That's for sure. Yeah, I haven't seen one interview of him trying to sell it. So, like... This coverage of this, you know, thing that's in his book is is great way to sell it. Mm. It just happened on its own. It's pretty cool. At least for a content creation standpoint, <laughs> that's something you put out on your own. It catches steam. Yeah. Good Interesting. Term. But 
All right, our last uh, news item I saw about this huge legendary hip hop archive finds its home in a museum in Harlem. Um, Fred Brathwaite, mm-hmm. uh, the original host of Yo MTV Raps back in the day, who mm-hmm. um, was kind of at the forefront of the whole hip hop exploding onto the scene, and you know was very much oh, involved Fab with all Freddy. that. Fab, Fab Five Freddy, yes, um, yes. very much involved with all that. So he kind of, I guess, he felt there was something special going on happening around him. And he spent all those years basically documenting and collecting all t- and archiving all types of like music videos, shows, like personal photographs, notebooks, you know, all types of stuff from mm-hmm. that era. And it's like, I think it said over like 120 boxes of material. Um, mm-hmm. And now it has been given, you know, a a home. Oh, okay. That's dope. <clears throat> so, That's I mean, like exclusive stuff right there. And he was really on the scene, like, so this would this would be like some really behind the scenes shit. Yeah, then this is like at the origin basically of hip hop being birth. Yeah. Yeah, he was like the coolest dude in New York. It's kind of weird. Because he was friends with all the artists, all the visual artists, too. Like, he was friends with Jean-Michel Basquiat before um, before Warhol, Warhol met Basquiat. And then, you know, Fab Freddy's hanging out with Basquiat and Warhol, you know, because he's, like, mm-hmm. friends with them. And, like, you know, and Keith Haring and them, like, they drew pictures of him. There's portraits of these these famous artists made portraits of Fab Fab Freddy. So he's, like, you know, it's kind of a big deal. He's also I mean, he's an got, artist. He's got he makes yeah. art too. He's got a ton of like personal snapshots. Uh it's like one of Queen Latifah and I think speaking to maybe I don't know who that is, but he's got a ton of vinyls, ton of VHS recordings, a ton of like lyric notebooks and stuff like that. People like we're writing in and stuff like this. And he got the mm. scripts to um I think the original scripts to like original screenplays to like New Jack City Juice and Wild Style, mm. and just all types of just amazing stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and it is going to be shown at New York Public Library's Schomburg Center for Research in Black Culture oh, yeah. in Harlem. Yeah, the Schomburg that makes sense. So anybody with a public library card will be able to check it out. Yeah, definitely go. That's tight. I like that. There's no date yet announced, but I'm sure there will be one forthcoming soon. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I've actually been to his studio. I met him once. Where? Studios in Harlem. Yeah. Sick. It's it's like, it's probably like four or five blocks away from, oh, no, I guess it's on the other side of Harlem. Never mind. That'd be like eight blocks away. <laughs> but, yeah. Just a dope moment, man. Hip hop has come a long way, and just kind of see all these like origin stories, origin material of like how it came to be. It yeah, is dope, and to see it like make it way into like something like the public New York Public Library and like museums and stuff is is sick, man. Definitely, it's, you know, it's a it's a major part of the culture, and it's dope that we're finally like acknowledging the cultural importance can't be ignored hip-hop. anymore that's for sure yeah <laughs> big up to F- fab five freddy yep. putting out this this time capsule of you know hip-hop gems you've been keeping <laughs> stuff you'll check that out once it gets its release date but on to our main category uh game of thrones oh so, shit so uh, as you know, we haven't really talked a ton of Game of Thrones on these podcasts, and that is mainly because somebody, one of us, uh, waited 10 years to finally. <laughs> when you say check 10 it years, out. it sounds crazy. I didn't wait 10 years. It just took them 10 years to get to the end of the, <laughs> the story. <laughs> 
I mean, that's not my fault. That's their fault. But now that I've seen all of the Game of Thrones, we can get real in depth. I know we probably could have had a whole lot of really crazy talks, you know, over the years, especially, you know, with the journey Daenerys has gone through. But, you know, we're going to wrap it up right here. <laughs> There's Spoiler one cast. About you waiting so long is that you should have fresher in your memory the earlier seasons. Yeah, definitely. <clears throat> because and there's, some, crazy, there's um, some cool connections. Thanks. So, like you mm-hmm. said, this is a full on spoiler cast. So, if you have not seen Game of Thrones, you don't want to have any of those big moments spoiled for you, then I highly suggest <laughs> you check out now and finish the series and then come back and check this out. That is our one and only warning that we are going to give to you. And if you We're stick around and you haven't seen it, that's that's just on you. Yeah. Some people like spoilers before they watch, so <laughs> hopefully we say something interesting <laughs> that you remember like, oh they're right, you know. Or nah, I don't agree with that. So that's cool too. But we're about to get into the shit. Spoilers. Start. So we're gonna kinda do this a little backwards. I want to start at season eight first because this has been a highly divisive and uh controversial season for what has typically been a critically loved and fan loved show. Mm-hmm. I don't think any season or moment has gotten as much backlash as, you know, this one has in particular. Yeah. And well there's some good points and there's some kind of overblown points and you know I kinda wanna get into that. Word. I feel you, man. I mean, there's a whole first lot to all, get into with the you, last season. First of all, just tell me how you felt about how they ended it. Like, do you think they ended it in a satisfying way or not? Um, I think having known that if... <laughs> I, don't, I don't feel satisfied. I feel like it ended. Like, I was most... Like it felt weird. Like the the it felt like the season peaked, and then there was still an episode where they just decided to sum up everything. It was like, all right, let's like sum this up, you know? Let's let's like kind of clean some stuff up. And uh, I just wasn't. I just didn't really like the last the last little bit. Um, the beginning, I'd say for the most of the first season, I loved. Uh, because it, it seemed like. They were doing a lot of different stuff, but then it actually stood out, I think, a little bit more than other seasons um, in terms of just what was different. Like, some things were a little different. Like, some some scenes were, like, felt longer than they were previously. Like, there was a lot less dialogue, more action, more things happening. Mm -hmm. Longer uh, establishing shots, you know. It was kind of weird, but I fucked with it for the most so, part. Yeah, so I wasn't satisfied, um, but I wasn't like, or I wasn't super mad about the overall outcome of it because it's kind of what I expected anyways. He said for years that it's not going to be a happy ending. Like, nobody, it's not a fucking fairy tale where things are going to go like they do in the movies and how everything just plays out perfectly. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. So I saw all those turns coming, like, for example, with the Daenerys whole kind of controversy and backlash, people are so mad that she burned down the city and yeah. And like, I don't get why people are mad about that because it's literally been foreshadowed for, I don't fucking know how many seasons. Oh yeah. Like all the, every time they talk about her or somebody from that, like, the actual Westeros has a conversation with her or talks to her about her and her history is always about the Mad King, the Mad King and Targaryens mm-hmm. like, get mad with, you know, basically power and lust and whatever. Like it basically just runs in their almost blood, you know? So mm-hmm. it the whole series, she's just gone through so much shit and she finally gets there and 
I, I, I was like, she about to burn this whole shit down. Like I knew she was, and she, yeah, she even alluded to it way before, anyways. And you know, so I, I, I didn't really get the backlash with that. I get it from perspective that they've done. Like again, I said I'm not really mad about the whole outcome of the season, yeah. but I can understand why there's so much backlash from one point in particular is that the pacing was fucking horrible for this season. Like. Oh, yeah. The first two episodes were basically nothing. Okay. So we're building. So there's only, what, what six episodes? <laughs> six episodes. So when there's only, so, so if there were like 15 episodes or 12 episodes, and you give me two episodes of like nothing for a fin- season series finale, I'd be like, okay, that's fine. There's plenty more. You know, you're just building. But even if it was 10, like the original yeah. 10, like, okay, there's plenty, there's plenty more moments in the previous seasons where there's episodes that don't, nothing really happens, kind of just building up to something. But when there's only yeah. six episodes, it's like, all right. Uh, I like the format better in the old ones. We're getting a little close to the finish line here. Like, are you just going to throw away two episodes from the jump? Like, you know, and it's like, yeah. all right, I don't know where the fuck they're going to go with this. And then the third episode. We're ramping it up. They finished it all. They <laughs> they they like emptied their clip on the third episode. Yeah, it was just the fucking pacing. Like they became caricatures of themselves. Like the show has always been heavy on dialogue, heavy on exposition, heavy on character development, and you know, really making you understand why certain characters are doing certain things. You know. Why they're taking these turns? Why you mm-hmm. know it's got to go this way? Because they'll take entire seasons to kind of build them up to that point, and yeah. basically Daenerys gets there, and then in three episodes she turns into the Mad Queen. It's like all right, and she doesn't even really talk very much, and like she doesn't really have any type of conflict yeah. between going that way. You know, you don't really get to see that because they just fucking rush through everything. Yeah, she just like they just made it happen. I was like, okay, I wasn't mad. I just I got it, but I it just the pace. They just t- turned the switch on. I just like, hated right. the fucking leaps of gigantic leaks of like logic and just giant gaps of plot that they just left out because they shortened it to six seasons. Where oh yeah, where you know it almost took. Well, it did take, what, Arya an entire almost two seasons to get to the north that one time? Yeah, bro. (laughs) Fam, Arya Stark's story was so interesting. And, like, I was was a little bit mad at certain moments uh, how they were doing her character. Uh, Because I thought she was, like, hands down one of the top three badass characters in the whole show. Once she got trained. After she got trained. Because, like... The when she like, like I don't like how they underplayed when she like wore the face that one time to like, uh, kill the king or whatever it was. What was that? I just I wish she was. was I thought. All right, here's the only thing. I thought she was gonna wear the face more than. More Fam, than my whole thing was like they needed. I wanted them to use her in the last episode, like or something. Uh, like, all right, I didn't need her in. The or last, not the last I didn't episode need her that much in the last episode, but in the third episode, I really thought. That she was going to be Bran sitting there, and she like take the the mask off. Oh yeah, and then then kill it, then kill the, the Night King. That shit would have been od. I really thought right. that that's what she, that they were doing with some shit when she left and ran out. Right, but I mean, she still <laughs> ended the war. She just never used the mask. That's what I'm saying. Why did they give us such a cool like? Th- why do I know about the the god of many faces? Like you know, like what 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 is all of that bullshit for? If it I, doesn't matter exactly. in the end, I really if thought it doesn't it matter in the end. Somewhere. What are you telling me about it? So I didn't like, really understand the whole part where I thought she was still kind of being chased by him. I didn't, you know, I I didn't know she was in the free and clear from that whole life for life thing because yeah. she killed. The other whatever girl, I don't know if that's mm-hmm. just basically that was the life that she gave, so that she doesn't have to give her life. I don't, I didn't really understand how that worked, and then just like mm-hmm. nothing else kind of came from that, and she did all that, and she did <clears throat> right after that those season, I think it was either that season or season after where she 
got her revenge on on so many people. That shit was fucking amazing. Amazing moment. Oh, yeah. And then I'm thinking, right. all right, I can't fucking wait to see who else she. Like when she killed Littlefinger, that was lit. Like in the in the in the courtroom when she just walked up and was just like little finger. I was the, like, oh hell yeah! I don't, even, I don't even remember the other family's name because there's so many of them. Uh, but when she fed her fucking kids to the king and then killed. Oh them. yeah, that shit was amazing I'm with like, the face. Right. Like yes, that bro, was like, lit. Right, I can't fuck. fucking wait to see where where more of this shit goes and and then nothing. And then Bran, same with Bran. I'm thinking, Bran basically got this shit into the stick for. He didn't even control series. anybody at the end. Like, there's literally entire seasons where he's basically non fucking existent. But then, like, I think season seven or six, I don't remember. He finally mm-hmm. gets like those the three eyed Raven's powers and like goes through all the shit up in the, yeah. uh, the north, and we legitimately see him warg fucking Hodor. Through fucking time and space from when he was like a a child to now. Yeah. And I'm thinking, alright, I can't alright, now he's full on the three eyed rate, full on powers. I'm thinking yeah. he's gonna do some crazy ass shit in the future mm-hmm. seasons. Like I, I literally thought he might like warg Daenerys' dragon or some shit and That's what I thought. Over. I was like, Oh, he might just like right? That's what I thought. But no but, but guess no. what he does? He sits in a fucking <laughs> wheelchair the entire fucking time and does nothing and just talks and talks and talks and acts like he's too over this shit and like high and mighty and I get it he's kind of disillusioned from humanity's troubles but he doesn't even do shit yeah he was like I need to think like I was I don't even know what the fuck he was like he was like what what did he, what fam all he did was be bait in the last season. All he did was be bait. He was bait for the Night King, and then they gave him the throne for it. <laughs> All hail the King of the Six Kingdoms. <laughs> Lily didn't do shit for as powerful of a character as he became. He didn't do shit. I was I was confused. That was so. Those are things that I could see why people are mad at this last season because of how much they built up with other people and like. Well, just like, oh, people no. people were also really pissed about Jon Snow. Um, I wasn't Damn, that pissed. About I was him. I wasn't pissed. I mean, I, they pissed that he like killed Daenerys. That was like I could see that from a mile away. Yeah, that was. I was no pissed. I was pissed about. I guess if anything, just. I was more pissed at, like, Grey Worm. I thought he should have just, like, fought Jon Snow to the death or something, you know? Like, it was kind of weird that Grey Worm got to just, like, why is he going to North? Like, the girl got beheaded and your queen died and you're just going to take your whole army to North? Isn't that you're, the city? You're not a king. The, no, isn't that the city that she had talked to him about? How she wanted to return to? And yeah, that's the city They have nobody that... to protect him? Yeah, so I got that. So he's fulfilling that, you know. Yeah, he's gonna go protect them. I get that, sort of. But like, why? Why is he allowed to just go? Fuck the Grey Worm shit. Like, I don't. I don't need them to fight. Why the fuck didn't didn't Jon Snow fight the fucking Night King? Because <laughs> he couldn't. I don't know what that. It's was. literally That's been weird a head too. on. It's literally been a head-on collision between Jon Snow and the Night King since, what, the second season? Third season? Yeah. I don't know, man. It's literally been building up to a a battle, at least a skirmish between the two where they exchange any because sort of Because you would have thought sword they would bring and... it back. Nah, no swords, homie. I'm going to just raise my hands. And you're going to have to Listen, deal with my No, homies. that moment... <laughs> look, that, that moment was fucking dope. Like, nah, fuck that. You, you, you don't know who I am? Yeah, it's like, oh, you, you thought you was just going to run over here. Okay, that moment was cool. But then at the end... Yeah. I get he was trapped by the dragon, but come on. 
he I should mean, have at least Targaryen. had some I mean, sort of fight got, with them. Uh, and let's say, let, no, listen, let's say, let's say he fights with them, trying to save Bran, and he's at the, he's losing, he's about to lose, and then Arya comes out of fucking nowhere and saves his ass. That shit would have mm-hmm. been fucking amazing. And that was so simple. You would have satisfied everybody with that little sequence. Because everybody wanted to see True. Jon Snow fight the Night King. That would be I didn't need Jon Snow to kill the Night King. But they made that Theon's really moment. I didn't think going to be the one to kill him. Right. I didn't think that Jon Snow was going to actually kill the Night King. But the fact that they did never even once kind of fought. Actually, we've never seen Night King fight anybody. You've never seen him pull out. Like, when he's finally about to pull out the ice sword, he gets killed. Like, he's been wearing that shit forever. Like, motherfuckers been waiting for him to fight forever. Oh, yeah. the I, Oh, yeah. The Night King. Those were all the White Walkers that fought. The Night King never His little fight. generals or whatever. They fought Charles yeah. Stone, Whatever. But the Night King? Yeah. Never. That's so funny. <laughs> I didn't even think about that. I was like, wait, didn't he? Oh, we got to see him. Well, he's got a mean the javelin throw. The dopest moment he ever did was a javelin throw. Yes. <laughs> But other than that, you just get you just get the shot of him sitting on a horse or standing somewhere, just staring off at you like menacing. Yeah. And we finally I get wanted... a chance to see him fuck shit up, like really fuck shit up. We don't yeah. see it. That's all I'm saying. I, other than that, I love the the battle. Their battles, hands down, some of the best ever seen in a TV show. Oh yeah, and for sure. It was fucking crazy. Oh, in a TV show, that's like number one. Like I don't think that's ever been. I just think like again, they put it all into one episode, and it's like <laughs> so we get the one night. So we've been waiting for the night came for fucking eight seasons, and we get them in yeah. one episode. Like the actual, like we get the battles done yeah, in one fam. episode. What the fuck? Come on now, that's bullshit. Yeah. You just wasted two episodes. The, the beginning battle should have been for no episodes. reason. They shouldn't have made the battle a whole two episodes. Two episodes. Uh, episode and a half at the least. Like, come on. Yeah. The pacing. Pacing was fucking terrible. Like, come on, bro. People waited eight seasons to finally get some Night King action, and we get one episode mm-hmm. of it. And it's like, man. Yeah. I, I, it was I, like, I like, who's going to win? I was like, this is the battle we've all been waiting for. This is this is it. <laughs> like, well, what now it's over. <laughs> Halfway through the season, like, wait, what? Wait, we still got uh, three more episodes. <laughs> the fuck? Yeah, like, what the Yo. fuck. All right. And then, and then, and then, some more bullshit. Oh, cool. This is gonna be another fight scene. Be like, oh wait, there's weird stuff going on in this in, in this scene. I wasn't mad that she like burned down the city. It was just the way moments were happening in the last season was making me hate it. Like. When Daenerys looked at the Red Keep the pacing, right before, the you know, when she was on the dragon, it looks like she's going to fly straight to oh, the I Red Keep. I thought she was going to fly to the Red Keep queen. and just destroy it. But then she exactly. just. She just. She just. Destroys the city. Nah. And, keeps, and she's doing laps around the Red Keep. Like, I'm like, fam, you don't want the satisfaction of, of just burning her and, and then you can continue? You just, like, want her to watch? Like, yeah. I literally thought she was going to destroy the Red Keep instead of just destroy everything else around it <laughs> for like a fucking hour. And she's I was so mad at that. I was like, why yeah. are you like, I get it. You're mad at the bells, but like go fucking kill Cersei. <laughs> like, <laughs> and yeah. then, yeah, there was weird. The pacing. Moments. It's the bro. All of these issues could have easily been fixed if those 10, 10 episodes. And you know what I read is that HBO huh. offered them 10 episodes. And they turned it Oh, yeah, I heard that, too. They did six. Yeah, I heard that. And seven. And they offered them ten episodes for the last two seasons. They turned it down. What the fuck? No. Could have easily been (laughs) fixed. There would have been no problems. Ten ten episodes. You, the the normal pacing of a Game of Thrones season. Yeah. Well, we didn't, we didn't get that. I was also mad at how they did Lady of Tarth. Brienne. That shit was kind of annoying. What do you mean? The way she cried. Like, they ruined her character with crying for Jamie. Uh, yeah. That's that was weird. Fine. And she didn't, like, follow or anything. She just, like, chilled. Why would she follow? She has her duty as a 
night to protect Sansa. Yeah. That's true. That's all. Yeah. No. The only thing I didn't like about the battle is nobody fucking died. Like, literally, <laughs> they resurrected everybody that died twice. And, like, you got, like, don't get me wrong, I love Torment, but he's literally standing on a pile of, like, a hundred corpses, and he's fighting them off single-handedly. Or, like, yeah. Or, like, yeah. Jamie with one fucking hand, one weak hand. Oh, yeah. Fighting off 20 uh, zombies and shit. Like, come on now. Like, now we're mm-hmm. just straight up Hollywood movie territory. Come on, Game of Thrones. You were better oh, than this. Oh, 100%. They got, they got a little ridiculous with it, for sure. But, yeah. I was like, oh. It was oh, just weird. Was there like, were Jamie's just weird moments. One hand? Oh, he's dead. The for last sure, episode sure. was weird. Yeah. My only thing with, like, the last episode with, like, I just thought it was bizarre how certain things transpired <laughs> like when when they gave the throne to Bran like Tyrion was in chains as a prisoner who they just told to shut the fuck up and then he proceeded to tell them who they should have as king and they said cool but when Charlie stood up and said, let everyone vote, they laughed him out of the room. I liked how yeah. that was like social commentary, but I thought just the way I liked they it did because that it was, like, was weird. Because I was like, you just told the prisoner to shut the fuck like, up fuck and then your, did exactly what he your, told I, you to do. I, look, I liked it because it was like, again, it's always been about subverting expectations and everybody wants that kind of fairy tale idealistic ending. And the idealistic ending is that Every citizen gets a vote. Every citizen matters now. Hell and yeah. Like, and they're like, what? No, fuck you. Man, you such a bitch ass down. Like, <laughs> yeah. Like, I, like that, part, like, I like yeah. that part, bro. I like that part. Like, no, I like that part too. This is Westeros. Like, I was laughing at it too. I just thought they would laugh. I honestly was expecting them to laugh when Tyrion said Bronn. I thought, I thought there was going to be one chuckle. Nobody chuckled. They just waited yeah. and started talking. I was like, damn, nobody chuckled. I knew, I knew he was gonna get picked once. Once I saw how shit went down, I was like, "Yeah, he's gonna be picked." Yeah, I just felt I like mean, the it was way just a week there was just the rushing of shit, like the it kind of seemed like they passed the king baton when Bran was staring the Ice King in the eyes. It looked like that's when they were telling us, "Oh, he's the first king. of all." I knew Jon Snow was never gonna be the king. He's been a bitch the entire series. I don't understand why people were expecting him. him I just wanted him to die to for a cause. I wanted him to give his life for something he believed in instead of just like riding out with the you know he i mean has it's cool. been a bitch the entire series look Damn. don't get me wrong he's a badass but i don't understand why people think he was gonna all of a sudden turn into some like fucking superhero or, like some hero of the story when he's literally spent the entire series turning that shit down like he literally died over some morals and convictions like literally got killed yeah. by his own people over this shit like I don't, yeah. and then came back, you know, crying like a bitch about it. Like, I just don't understand why people think all of a sudden he's yeah. going to step up and be the king of the entire West. Like, bro, have you not been following him this entire series? Like, it's the last thing he wants. Yeah, nah. Well, the problem with that, yeah, but that's the thing, though, here with the, the plot holes is, like, Ferris was murdered for leaking the information that Jon Snow is the rightful heir or whatever. And, like, other people having knowledge of Jon Snow being a Targaryen, like, didn't matter. Like, that was another but thing that... Technically, he didn't leak it. Uh, he was going to write the letter, remember? But yeah, but remember there was more than one letter. they came and got him. They came and got him. He already he already finished the letter. It no. looked like there were several letters. No, if you watch that scene over again, there's more than one. He's got more than Bro, one card. I'm pretty sure he did not send them out yet. I'm telling you, they had to. But if they didn't, at the same time... Oh, wait. I'm just saying. Well, that little I, girl knows. That little I girl never knows. thought Jon Snow was the hero of the story. Like, well, he's been the reluctant... Everybody... Okay, he, his whole... R.R. Martin's whole thing is about subverting tropes and expectations. And, like, the whole trope of being the reluctant hero is the biggest trope in all the fantasy stories. Like, literally. 
the guy oh, who yeah, doesn't sure. want the the responsibility, who doesn't want the power. That's why he's the right guy for this situation. Like that's literally the biggest trope in yeah. any type of fantasy story or any heroic story. And like his whole fucking series has been about subverting those tropes. So I'm like, of course he's not gonna fucking end up being the king. Are you kidding me? Like, oh yeah, of course. Yeah, no. My only thing is, how does he have conscious enough to go? Like he listened. So it's obvious. Uh, he's a bitch. Jon Snow's always been a bitch. Yeah, he did what he was told. What's his name? The imp told him in the dungeon that he's the only one who would get close enough to Daenerys to kill her. So he walks off and walks past the dragon and then kills her because he told him to. And then <laughs> literally it was all about him. That's what that whole last season was, was low key about uh, Mr. Lancaster. The, the... Yeah, I mean, it wasn't about Daenerys because she barely even had a role this season, honestly. She was more like yeah, a, I know. a that powerful was piece, like a a trope, just the just the power, you know, just the enemy at the real, you know, MacGuffin, mm. the real enemy behind everything. You know, like it's just it was just nah. I just don't really enjoy it the way they end the season. But to me it was like such easily fixed mistakes that they made if they just made it ten ten episodes. But enough of season eight talk. Um I think it's pretty unanimous. We both were disappointed with the way it ended and the way they handled, like, particularly the pace of mm. things. And I think they could have done a much better job of that and fixed so many issues. Um, but the rest of the series, mm-hmm. not many, not <laughs> many complaints for me. No, nah, honestly, the whole the whole shit is fire. Like, it's what's weird is just like how the it just ramped up in that last one. Like it, it, it definitely stood out. But yeah, these other seasons, I'm trying to think of some of my favorite. Well, some of your moments, favorite like, moments, yeah, yeah. Obviously, I think like the when Red she Wedding. got the Unsullied, when she got the her army for uh, the first time, I think that was like one of my favorite moments when she the brought first the time after she birthed the dragons or after she burned down the entire tent. Oh, see, the birth of the dragons is kind of like. One of the most lit moments, just because I was just like, and that's at the end of what season two, I think two. Yeah. So like, and it took forever because honestly, in the first season, I remember why I didn't like keep going is because the mystical shit didn't happen for a while, and I remember having watched like the first like four or five se- like episodes and wanted to like see some magic or dragons and. Like, wasn't that ready? Like, I was. I think it was like still coming out on cable, so I didn't commit to it. And then I just never came back. But it's a shame because once they started getting into the shit, it it was crazy. Like the the red priest is crazy. Like when she lit the swords, oh, I didn't even mention that for that fire. Oh my god, that shit was lit. But um. Yeah, I mean, that was cool until they all got wiped out, which uh, another point I didn't understand is I thought all Damn. those motherfuckers were dead. And then all of a sudden, the end of the season, there's like 20,000 more of those motherfuckers. Like, bro, where did she Oh, get yeah. All those, no, they were like rifles? endless or something. Bro, it was weird. I, I was literally like, saw them all like, get wiped out. They were running yeah. back with empty horses. And then and then that fast forward to season to episode seven, eight, and there's like a thousand of them setting there. Like, yo, I was like, where the fuck did they come from? <laughs> Yeah, but whatever. I was whatever. like, "How are All they right. running through the town?" Like, yeah, whatever. Too many issues with season eight. Too many issues. <laughs> but yeah, man. Uh, let's see. I mean, the fire. So that episode was crazy. What? I don't know. I love when she burned that that slave owner, that master with the dragon. Like he was like, "Your dragon's not like take like listening to me or like you know following yeah, yeah. Or directions or whatever." She was like, "Dracarys, <laughs> bitch." I mean, kill all your masters. I mean, yeah, Daenerys was cool. Honestly, Daenerys was not my favorite character at all of the series. Nah, like she, had she wasn't my favorite character moments. For sure, cool Spe- especially with the dragons. But I thought there were some 
some super weak moments too, especially with like the whole when she took the city with the slaves and the masters. I mm. thought that whole kind of story arc was kind of trash. Um, yeah, that was a long. See, like that's my whole thing. Like, how are you gonna do that whole long ass shit? And then yeah, the, the ex- shit? Yeah, yeah, we've talked about it. <laughs> <laughs> but for sure, like, obviously, Joffrey dying was. A highlight. Oh my god! Like that was that's amazing. Like one of the I was so glad I didn't have to hear him anymore. Game of Thrones. This is literally one of the few moments where Game of Thrones actually did fan service and like paid off what everybody wanted for like for I don't know what four seasons. Like when is this motherfucker Fam. gonna die? Like he was getting so bad too, and I was like, if he's just like, you know, because he was getting so much screen time and like. Uh, he was just annoying as fuck. Like, yo, when but, is this bitch gonna die? And he finally fucking died, and that shit was amazing. And yeah, and it was so smart. That was when the writing was the best too. Oh yeah, because there was, I was so like, much nobody really knew who killed her. Him. Yeah, nobody, not, nobody knew who killed them. Like, it wasn't obvious, you know. Yeah, and then like Littlefinger had help. Like, it wasn't just like oh, Littlefinger's plotting and blah blah. It was like the grandma was in on it. Like that shit was that was crazy. That so shit was that, crazy. That's... The whole death with um, God, who's the one that basically raped Sansa and called the uh... oh the Baratheon it wasn't Baratheon. Baratheon is the one that burnt his uh daughter because the Red Witch said so. Oh, oh, um. The Bastard. I mean... Yeah, the what? Battle of the Bastards, whatever that one was. That shit was yeah. fucking amazing. Battle of the Bastards was the Battle goddamn of Bastards incredible. I loved that one. That was actually really good. That, that was, was like a legit, good. like, war fucking scene. Like, yeah. straight. Without, like, oh, how's this guy standing on, you know, million corpses? Like, yeah, that no, one, no. like, made sense. Like, they that were hacking was one of the best to scenes. survive. Yes, that was one of the best battle scenes I've ever seen. And it's... Oh, and then the bastard got his end in the best way possible. It was the dogs, right? Yeah. 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 And he had just said, like, I haven't been feeding them for, like, a week. So they're, like, rabid. They can't. <laughs> and he said, she, she sat him in there and just, like, opened all the doors and just let them do their thing. So that, that shit was great. great. Like, I wanted Cersei Red Wedding to obviously shit like was. That. Yeah, Cersei did never got what she really deserved for as nope. fucking terrible as she was. Yeah. Worst thing that happened to her was walking around naked. Yeah, and that shit was still in my like. I mean, it was enjoyable to see her get her kind of come up and, but then she came back fucking hard, hard as fuck. <laughs> I yo, I'm gonna put a fucking, like, I'm gonna put a napalm, napalm bomb of some like shit under your fucking. I'm not even she, talking about. Before, I'm not even. That moment for sure was fucked up. But I'm talking about what she did to the lady that was torturing her. Oh, fam, she let the zombie rape her. Like that's yes, crazy. She, that's bro, crazy. When she like when she did that, that's why I was like, yo. <laughs> she might be worse than Joffrey. I was like, yo, she is. Bam! That was crazy. I was like, "Yo!" <laughs> and just keep her alive. Like, don't kill her after. Like, you could. Like, oh man, that's crazy. But that's what was crazy too. It's like, meanwhile, the castle's falling. Like, you know, she's in the castle too, like alive. <laughs> but don't worry about her. You know, it didn't matter. She's, she's dead. Ruthless. Yeah. That's when she saw how fucking ruthless she was. That shit was like, damn. Yeah. She's serious, bro. She like, yeah, don't She's like, her. remember when I smiled at you? Remember when I told you, like, my face would be the last thing you see before you die? That was yeah. cold-blooded revenge right there, like. I mean, again, there's some weak points. Like, her walking, yeah, that was great. But they dragged that on too long, I think, too, yeah. with the whole priest and stuff. That shit didn't really go anywhere at the end and dragged down far too that long. That was really and- long. They gave him more play than the Ice King. <laughs> Facts. And uh, <laughs> the whole shit when they went to the South, like Dorn, the whole Dorn storyline story was super weak. Fam, where, what is Dorn? Like, why are they, why did they play with us with Dorn? 
That was annoying. Yeah. Like, they might Dorne as well just not like even included them. Non existent. Are they even in the Seven Kingdoms? Like, nah, really. Like, what is Dorn? Like, I mean, when we got there, I was like, oh, this could be lit because the daughters were fucking badasses, like fucking assassins and shit. Yeah. But then right. it was weak as fuck. And yeah. I mean, the best thing from Dorn was the prince. Until oh, yeah. he got the cocky as fuck. Got, yeah, until he started monologuing like a fucking <laughs> yeah. uh, fucking evil villain and got his fucking head crushed in. Like Sick. that shit was satisfying up until then. I'm like, yo, he's fucking him up. And then Yeah. Of course. Honestly. Of course, Game of Thrones. Like... Of course you can't let us have this fucking moment. You right. know, like a fucking course, like God. Yeah. Oberyn, I think his name was. Oberyn, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the mountain and a viper. Yeah, that's crazy. Oh, Xerxes' face with with the priest outlawed fucking uh fucking your trial by combat. Oh, trial by combat. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, because she was like, "I got the mountain," and that's why Jamie left. He was like, "All right, cool," and, and then it was <laughs> trial by combat is outlawed. <laughs> it's like, oh, bet. So that's when she formulated a plot. That was man, nah, she was there's so many moments like mm. And while there's some there's so many characters that it's hard to even really kinda of talk and remember all of them. But mm. for sure Cersei was a fucking standout, like the way she developed throughout the whole season was amazing. The way Arya developed, um Especially like the Arya of the Mountain like relationship, I didn't really expect that to oh, be yeah. as good as it fucking was. But it or was the Hound, really fucking, yeah. the, the Hound, yeah. That she was the Hound had an interesting that. arc. With the, the Hound arcs. got really fucking good, man. I was like, I actually enjoyed him a lot. I yeah, loved but... him later on. At the beginning, I didn't really like. Him. Yeah, I didn't really care for him. But yeah, they I grew really to like him. him. Yeah. He, he became a good guy. <laughs> you know, he wasn't a piece of shit at the end. But even you can be a piece of shit. Cersei's a piece of shit, and I still loved her as a character. Like, <laughs> that's true. I don't that's care. True. Like Cersei was still easily one of the she best characters that in the so show. Well, she played that so well. That was Cersei was amazing. Sansa was trash for the entire series. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Did you like Sansa? Especially toward the like when John came back around. Like I don't like when like, they found out about each bitch. other. Yeah. It was like, uh, yeah. I don't know. Nah, after Sansa the sucks. battle, of, after the battle of the bastards, signs of like her character. I was like, she's the worst arc from literally episode one, and then she was still the worst arc by <laughs> episode eight of season eight <laughs> or the episode For six. For real, eight. I was like, how is your little sister way more badass than you? Like, she came back, like. As a bodyguard, she came back and put Lady uh, of Tarth on her toes when they were sparring. Like that was Man. tight. I like that little scene when she was like, "Oh, that's too small. You need a bigger sword." And she's like, "Don't worry, I won't cut you." <laughs> nah, Arya was a badass. Uh, she's for sure my favorite character. She was always my favorite character from the start. Yeah. The way she played her, I knew she was going to turn into a badass. Like all that, mm-hmm. like saw that coming. So definitely paid that one off. Yeah, Sansa just. They tried to like give her a whole arc where she becomes more mm-hmm. of a like queen type character, but she sucked. Yeah, she didn't get her hands dirty. She sucked. But yes. the little chick, uh, what's I don't even remember her name. The one that fucking killed the giant From zombie, Mammoth, or what was it? Ma- Mor- yeah, something like that. More Mor- something, uh, like- some bro, bad yeah. ass. I really wish they did not fucking Yeah, kill Mormont. Yeah, the House of Mormont or something like that. She I was... Really that, they they gave her a proper sending. A proper... They did. If she know. was going to die, she had to die like that. But come on. She was fucking... And her... She was holding scenes, it down. She was the she best was holding character it down. TV, bro. Yeah. That was crazy. She was out... Like, she was out doing Sansa. Everybody. Like, I, I, I wanted to yeah, see that. her way more than I wanted to see Sansa talk. Like, Facts. Facts. <laughs> <laughs> like and I was you kind think? of sad that she had to go I was like oh I was like damn you know cause like yeah. if she would have just like, stayed safe like G, and not fought like, she probably she could have been fall. alive after the battle yeah, maybe but damn 
do you think uh, Theon had a satisfying kind of redemption arc? Uh, I think the closest they could do once they got to a certain point was let him die honorably defending Bronn. Because... Reek. <laughs> I, I feel that way. I'm going to call that shit. Once Your name he, is once Reek Once he now. said <laughs> no to his... His name's Reek. <laughs> Bro, that shit was amazing. That was amazing. I was like, damn... I was like some schoolyard That's bully shit, bro. Your name is Reek it's now. I'm going to call you. You only answer to Reek. <laughs> what? What I couldn't believe was he didn't leave with his sister, but then he, like, broke for Sansa. And I think it's maybe just because he had more time around her and she could chip away at him a little bit more. But mm-hmm. at the same time, I was like, fam... Like you, you almost you basically sacrificed yourself to get her out of there. But like your sister, like you wouldn't even sacrifice yourself when like she was captured, really, like for a minute. And then like he didn't really go back. Like it was weird. Like I don't know. Yeah, and I think my biggest thing with I know they were trying to cover so much of the book. But they could have cut out so many parts. Like they could have cut out their whole Iron Islands part because their sister really didn't do shit either. Um, mm-hmm. Like going went, going to his home and having that whole little story arc was pretty pointless. Having the story arc with Dormer pointless. Having the that was a lot. There were just certain moments like they could have just easily cut out Damn. and give other when more prince, interesting things. When the prince, <laughs> when when Jamie was fighting their dude, the Ironborn. Uh, what's his name? Uncle or whatever. Yeah. At the bottom of the castle, that was the, that was the 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 biggest waste of time scene. I, like in that. Yeah. Uh, that shit was he's crazy. just a character what's I did not like at all. Like he just wasn't a fucking good or or interesting character. Like he was just such like a yeah. He just felt out of place. How like over the top he was. Well, yeah, because I found it strange that he wasn't introduced yet. Until all of a sudden, you know, and then like that storyline just Fizzled sped up out. and came and went. But yeah. it was integral because, like, that was Cersei's, like, you know. I mean, was he really though? I mean, it was, he could have been anybody the dragon. in that situation. Yeah, they had to give him one win. He took down a dragon. And then literally the next episode, she's fighting a thousand arrows and she flies around him like it's nothing. Like, I'm like, oh, come on now. Yeah. This is some straight Hollywood bullshit now. It just got too, For real. too, too blockbustery, too, you know, yeah. they just got away from kind of that grounded realism that the other seasons had, even though it was still fantasy, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, even though there was like voodoo or magic or whatever in some of the stuff, it felt like based in like a real world where shit could happen. Oh, they were breaking yeah. their own rules for sure. They were breaking their own rules. Yeah. But I think that overall, like as a series, it was still fair, it's still one of a kind. Like, oh yeah, it stands out. It's one of the greatest shows ever made. Easily. Yeah, and I think our next conversation from one of our future episodes is going to be how does this rank among TV shows for sure? Oh, that's going to be a very good combo. Because I was as soon as it was over, I was trying to think of. Better shows? Like, what was better? Breaking Bad. <clears throat> oh, yeah. No, I said that. I said that Game of Thrones can't be better than Breaking Bad because it's not wrapped the up. The ending. The ending is so important. Like, Breaking like it's Bad crucial. It's one of the best endings you will ever find in any medium of anything. Like, yeah. the way it ramped up so perfectly paced, literally, from season to season, and the way oh, it gave Oh, for real. Ending, and like, you you wanted you wanted to watch the last episode. Like, you had to. And yes. the whole thing to the very last in the, like, scene was important. Like, all of it was, like, it, it gave you something. Like, it was, it was dope, for sure. And uh, Gustavo as a villain in that Fire. shit. Gustavo Frank. <laughs> Gustavo was so fucking savage in that shit. That was lit. Yeah. 
Gustavo definitely have my alone. vote. I mean, for me, it's like the endings. The ending is is what's going to take this one down significantly in the eyes of you know people. It just left a bad taste after so many years of just doing things basically right for the most part. Like not every episode was great. Obviously, there's storylines that are pretty trash mm-hmm. and characters that are pointless. But for the most part, as a whole, it was fucking fantastic and like it was such a great yeah. adaptation of such a complex world mm-hmm. and it basically was all about i mean at, at its core yes it had fantasy elements but at its core it was still like a political fucking tv show like still it oh, was yeah. all about politics and they somehow made politics and shit like that interesting and yeah. it was just the ending that is going to ruin some of these opinions when you look back at it and it's like so many shows go through that, you know, and I just wish they could have stuck the landing better and it would just fucking been perfect if they could have done that. And like just kept both last seasons to ten episodes and mm-hmm. and don't rush it, basically. Don't rush the story. Like you haven't rushed the story up until that point, why rush it now? Like we've literally gone through entire seasons where Arya could not get to the south, <laughs> you know. I mean get to the north. Yeah. It took her two seasons to get mean, north. Yeah, I mean, the battle was one episode. Arya started and then literally blind for like three episodes. Literally, they're <laughs> in the north. Literally, they're in the north. And then the next episode, they're at the fucking front gates of, you know. The oh, throne. yeah. Like, it's like, come on. Now we're just jumping all over the fucking place. Like, it's just mm-hmm. you're ruining your own rules. But, I mean, overall, it was still <laughs> such a fantastic series. Like... Yeah. But there's so many things that I wanted to know more of. That's why it's like, it's kind of sad that it's over. It feels like there could be a sequel almost. You know what I'm saying? Like, it felt open ended enough so that there could be a sequel. Yeah. Word on the street is there's a prequel coming. There's for sure a prequel. No, there's like three spinoffs already being developed. Yeah. I don't think they're going to do anything to put like post. I mean, if they do, that'd be great. You know how much money this probably made them? Kidding me? Yeah, yeah, but like that—that's treading a fine line of ruining the brand. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, we're speaking of Hollywood, right? <laughs> oh yeah, I know they <laughs> so, don't care about. That. I mean, are we are we speaking? They're gonna of what, Star Wars the shit out of it. Of you what know? they like, shouldn't gonna, do, hey. or are we speaking of what is going to happen? <laughs> yeah, I'd be willing to bet that there would be. I'd be willing to bet that there would be a sequel. Even if it's in the form of like a movie, I would be willing to put money on that. That's well, I mean, because there's so many ways they could go with it. Because like Dragon still alive, exactly. and Jon Snow still likes him. He could find the dragon with the wildlings out there, and like he could still you can be, literally he could do be a dragon an entire king. Arya story. You can literally do an entire Arya story, basically, because she's out there. Oh yeah, because she's world. going to the new world, like yeah. uncharted territory. Yeah, that's tight. That would be a whole, that would be a lit. So while people are kind of like thinking it's the end of Game of Thrones, I'm like, nah, they're about to just print money left and right with this shit as long as they can. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. Game of Thrones is a powerful It was show. a ride, man. It was definitely a ride. It was crazy. But, but yeah, it's just it's that ending, to... man. Yeah, it's hard to even imagine that they did actually kind of finish the the series. Yeah. I don't know. There's just something about the most important moments of the show happening at the end and then moments in those endings being weird. That's all. You know? Like the, the Night King, most important moment of the entire show. Feel a little weird about it. And then the Iron Throne. Most important moment in the entire show. Felt a little weird about it. Jon Snow and, killing Daenerys. Pretty weak. Yeah. Just the way it happened was kind of just underwhelming. Like we were The way the dragon burned down the years, Iron Throne. So it, a little weird. I knew that was going <laughs> to happen. The, that, I knew that, it was yeah, happen. but that scene was long as fuck. The dragon like, like crying and burning the... Melting the Iron Throne and then flying off. I like the flying off part, but I just thought the scene was a little long. I just never really bought 
John and Daenerys together. It's like in love. Again. Oh, that never looked right. Pacing. That was always the most confusing thing. Because of pacing. Was like... Yeah. And also, it was hard to get out of my head that, hey, dude, that's your aunt. You know, like. Right. Yeah. Let's have some sort of morals and dignity here. Like. I mean, it didn't bother Jamie and. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, that's a whole other level right there. That's your twin sister. Twin. Twin. That's a whole other level there. Yeah, that was crazy. And they had like three kids. Again, together. they're deaf, weak. Weak. It was a shame because if you go back all those previous seasons, all the major deaths were. Oh, yeah. But what they did with that Super impactful. Yeah, I was trying to beat up that the way that ended too. The red but wedding? then I was thinking about it, and that's kind of the they they kind of did that for Jamie more than Cersei. That was that. Oh yeah, the red wedding. That was crazy. Mind blowing. But, Mind blowing. One of the top five most shocking moments I've probably ever seen on TV. Oh yeah, I love that. That was epic. That was epic. I was like, what the fuck just happened? <laughs> Again, the Game of Thrones is responsible Damn. for so many moments. That was crazy. My TV that, watching history I didn't... that it's like. <laughs> it's literally the greatest hits of Game of Thrones like you can do. Like it's it was that good. Yeah. Yeah, I like that it had so many seasons, too. Like, it's cool. Because, <clears throat> like... I just wish, again, the last two seasons, they did not rush, that's all. Yeah. Right there with you, man. Right there with you. Because there was so much, man. The Valyrian steel. Like, there were moments that they just, presented with the Valyrian yeah. steel that I thought would result in them killing, you know... Like White Walkers and the Dead and stuff, and it kind of mattered, but it didn't really matter, you know, because the Dragon Glass was there. Not really. I don't know. It's... Mm. Arya Stark, the best. <laughs> When she had the blacksmith make that uh, weapon for her, that was dope. She's like, "You, you have my weapon ready." Like, <laughs> she went in with that staff. Yeah, man, it's a, uh, it's a weird feeling. It's the end of an era. It's definitely the end of an era in TV. No more GOT, and... man. For now, you said um, no more main story <laughs> GOT. It's just. It's just, you know, it's so many moments, <laughs> so many special moments from the show that just always going to kind of stick with me. It's just a shame that it kind of got tainted by the end. Mm. And I really wish I could have just walked away from this. Like I walked away from Breaking Bad feeling like bittersweet, like sad that it's kind of like ending, but yeah. fucking hype in the way. Like I ran it back, the ending. Of Breaking Hyped Bad. Like, I watched the last episode twice. Like, oh, shit. I gotta watch this again. Like, yes. It was that like, good. I was like, sad that it ended, but I was so <laughs> hyped in the way it ended. Because most shit does not end well. Sopranos, for one. But Oh, my God. That's a great get, comparison to this shit. To they were doing some Soprano shit at the end of, of this ending, shit. It's just like, damn it. We were so close. <laughs> like We were so close to having a fucking... <laughs> Another series as, as good as Breaking Bad in terms of from and beginning uh, and like, but we just could not, yeah, quite get there. Mm-hmm. So it's so I wasn't really bittersweet. It was kind of like, uh, it's over. You know, it's not really the feeling I wanted to have. Yeah. But I mean, what do you guys think about Game of Thrones as a series, and specifically season eight and? What were some of your favorite moments from the show and what do you think that they could have done, you know, a little less of and what do you think they kind of would have delved more into? And uh 
And if you've read the books, how do you think this kind of compares to the books and how do you think they did adapting it? Mm. And do you think he'll ever finish uh, the book series <laughs> in the first place? Or is this the only <laughs> ending <laughs> that we'll cool. get to this to the story? Now. He's like, oh, shit. Uh, <laughs> yeah, let us know. Let us know what you think. You know, the comments down below wherever you kind of watch this. <laughs> but that is it for today's uh, spoiler cast podcast of Game of Thrones and culture and arts and news and everything. Uh, today's date, again, is May 29, 2019. Yeah. And as always, if you have any questions, comments, topic suggestions about this show, past shows, or any future show, you can let us know in the comments down below wherever you watch this on YouTube, SoundCloud, iTunes, on our website, wherever. Or you can email us directly at podcast at livelinefearless.co. We will try to get back to you, or you might show up as a topic in one of our future shows. If you like Anna Gary, once again, that we rock in these videos, you can head over to the site and grab some for yourself. We will be back shortly with more episodes, uh, more podcast episodes. But until then, you know, do what, Darice? Keep living life fearless. Yes, See sir. You next time. Catch you guys soon. Peace. Yeah.